So, Phil Butler, Featherston on the left. Dummy half is uh, Keith Bell with the shock of my dad, Richard Stone, halfway line on the right. Gibbons with the sweatband, the Mick Gibbons. Dummy half, Phil Butler. First man is going to be Farrow. He's barely, not the heaviest of those forward, but lively. Twelve is Richard Stone. on a first chance to get the knock taken knock on by Phil Johnson but the move look good
a chance for Featherstone. No score at the moment. Featherstone. Featherstone Better making the first strong attack with no score. It's an up and under, and it's an awkward one. It's a troublesome one. It could be anybody's, and it... No try, so close. score of the match two points with a goal well taken by Steve Quinn for Featherstone two points to nil ten minutes gone in the first half in this Yorkshire Cup final
because of it. They're losing at the moment two points to nil. They've got possession, Jim Huddleston in the second row, Bob Spur, using Big Mal really, trying to get the pass in, but does, but not successfully. Of Wetson and Wetson, you tough. Using uh, Mal really with his power box for the hooker. Six tackle coming up. Burton, the demi half, to score two points to nil for Featherstone and an up and under. And it's a nice up and under. He's got time to take his steady. Oh, he's been taken right over the line. John Martin took it so well.
dripping. Yeah, the 18 minutes. The turf is very greasy, actually.
good one to the fullback. Obstruction. Yeah, it's looking good. The score 2-2, two -two. and a chance for Sam Lloyd, who kicked a goal just seven minutes ago, to go into the lead. And it's hit the post, hit the post, and it comes out, and the score remains 2-2. Two -two.
Robert. On the half hour, Sammy Lloyd, who has just lost his kicking boot, gets it back, and the score 2 2. And it's the third penalty, and a chance for Lloyd to put Gasper in front. Featherston went in front 2 0, then Lloyd in the 18th minute made it 2 2. Kicked 31 goals this season. Very awkward angle. In the 32nd minute, drives it home, bang in the middle. Two points, four points. Now to Castleford, two to Featherstone. support to get the pass in but the cover is there on the six tackle scrum down This is the first break by New Love, nothing to come of it.
take it out. Chance for Featherstone. There's some supporting play by John Gilbert. Bring up with a Steve Evans. And the best bit of football by Featherstone so far puts them onto an attacking situation for giving Castle a chance to get back. Four minutes to go to end of a try here would be most valuable to either team. Sevens, Bill Butler taking Clyde Pickerel or the other way around. Three minutes plus injury time. John Newlow. A bit of a lost cause there, but managed to get the ball away, but a little bit of slapstick handling. his best bit of play. Yeah. Uh, he, got he got a cloud. Um, Tony Fisher for the second caution.
Chance for Featherstone into injury time in the first half. 4-2 for the moment for Castleford. Try here would do them awful, awfully a lot of good. Cross possession. A good release or relief for Castleford. for Castleford. Uh, a lot of uh, strength in the two teams. The black shorts of Featherstone in their blue hoops. Just goals. A goal by Quinn, uh, Quinn after nine minutes to make Featherstone 2-0. Then a Lloyd goal 2-2 and 31 minutes. Lloyd a penalty 4-2. And they're going to push the ball up but it's gone a little too far and into touch and ball back so Jeff Townend we've got an injured player Mal really Mal really was looking rather bad Johnny Malpass is uh, looking at his knee really would be a great blow if it did go off because he's had a very good game and of course a great leader. Uh, we've had one substitute, Peter Smith for Charlie Stone, and we had a talking to along with Fisher and the scrums. Featherstone the seven, Castleford four, and the penalties five five. Those are you're interested in statistics. John Love, John Marsding coming up whenever possible. Coach Keith Cotton has quite a few words to say to his team. And a good job at Featherstone. The Jepson family, I'm sure, will be watching this. And a lot for rugby league in the state of Featherstone. And Featherstone now doing it for themselves. Only a really a village, maybe, but great enthusiasts from both Featherstone and Castle. Great rivals. Headingly, the venue. This is the 70th Yorkshire Cup final. 
fullback John Marsden. John Gilbert, one of the ball of produced boys in the international at Hull, will be covering next month. Gibbons, and the whistle goes for the six tackles. So got off to a hard drive start in the second half. The weather looks uh, good and a good crowd. It is mostly Fetherston at that end. You can see the blue and white. Good followers. Their first division and their fourth at this moment against Castleford's 12th. And in all games so far this season, Featherstone played 19, one, played nine rather, won seven, lost two. And the score here, very close as we expected. Three minutes in, Castleford four, Featherstone two. Jeff Rays, who played up in Queensland, in Australia, played for Wakefield, quite a progressive fullback, hasn't scored this season. The whole Cutterford team has scored 31 tries, the whole Featherston team have scored 30, just indicating to you how close these two teams are all the time. So far, proving uh, effective in the lead. Somebody's got to go up, but it's a knock on. Must be a knock on, and uh, the referee, Mr. Norton, agrees with my assessment of it. Get on with the play, said Mr. Norton. Really? Had a couple of reallys up and unders that nearly came off. John Joyner. Six tries. Huddleston of Castleford. Castleford in yellow. On the left. Featherston in the hoops. And now West then going strongly. The best bit of Castleford who are now spread wide out across the field. Really, really looking, looking for support, getting it. And they've just saved by a brilliant, an accidental maybe, but still brilliant piece of saving by knocking the ball back. And Featherstone survived that, although they're down four points to two. Hewley goals. Five minutes in, second half, of course, in this. The Yorkshire Cup final, usually being contested in this last few years by Leeds and the Hulls, that's the Rovers and the Lats from the Boulevard. It was a knock-on, but the referee allows advantages, regular legal advantages allowed, and that was effectively out and running Onto the field, we've got the Masoa, but the play goes on. Really? Standing still, we've got to be moving. Lloyd does. Lloyd's pedaling. The report, and Burton's in. If it doesn't drop the ball, Burton to the five. With six minutes in, Castleford were moving effectively. There's a standing still pass, but it's this fella who made it. Lloyd made the move, and as ever, Burton supporting and went behind the post to make the score seven points to two for Castleford. And Bruce Burton, who was a great point scorer last year in the clip that they did in Grandstand in the uh, uh, half an hour or so ago, they included something with this fella. Last year, he got a lot of points. He'd been injured this season. This is his second try. 
and he also kicks goals, but he's very happy. Boy came from Halifax, and it is a fourth attempt, kick two, and the name of the man is Jeff Lloyd, known to his mates as Sammy Lloyd. 31 goals this season, 30. Well, he's kicked 32, 34, so nine points to two. But doesn't mean that the game is necessarily over because there's a lot of bright boys in the Featherstone side and it's only seven minutes gone in the second half, but tension and atmosphere in mounting between these two great rivals. They produce coal and they produce good rugby league footballers. Steve Quinn kicking. Ex York, he was junior. Okay. And that try will give Cadford a lot of encouragement, impetus to go forward. Picarillo had a good pass to get the movement, make it for the try, and a good tackle on Burton by Steve Quinn. I used to call Castleford in the few last year, Castleford Cubs, but I don't think I can say Tony Fisher's a cub. Or Mal Riley, for that matter, with a very good footballers. Bill Johnson. Six tackle coming up, which means there's a scrum down. Oh, and a bit of slack play. Pickerill. And there will be a, a scrum. Well, Castleford, uh, Dewsbury, they beat Dewsbury 12 5, beat York 23 17, and Keithley away 14 4, two aways. But Featherston had a much harder task. They won a, a very good win at Bradford, 20 points to 9, 12 2 at Wakefield, and 19 5 at Hull. Shows their prowess and ability. And the score at this moment is 9 points to 2, with 9 minutes gone in this second half. New love. John Bridges, known to his mates as Keith, international, great with New York, of course. And this is the chance for the are coming back. They've been adopting a very good progressive football style in this season under Keith Cotton, six tackle. A long, wide one. Somebody's got to come and support. Trying to cut some men out. A little kick, but he's not come off. It was Clyde Pickerel who saved it. Hotspur come back being injured. He'll roll over a couple of times if he can to make a couple of yards. Nine points. To the team in possession, Castleford a two to Featherstone. Lloyd, who made the try, the only try of the match so far. Most of the haze is gone. A nice little awkward one. You got to, oh, boo -boo. That's something unusual to see taking a flying kick. That uh, Malcolm Reilly, famous for his up and under, learning. Australia's the bond, but I think up and under the much better description. Halfway line. Scrums going for further. There's a good crowd here today in the South Stand. And uh, main stand, uh, that's a good view of, uh, of some scrummages. Burton, three left side steps, taking him 10 yards. Bruce Burton. Scrums 9-5 for Featherston. Featherston. Lloyd. Johnson. Malcolm really is 200th game for Castleford today, and then an overlap. But John Joyner decided to turn inside, and there's a six tackle. He's going to have a drop. Burn going to have a drop, and he's 
seemed to be a flapper. It was all right with Russ Burton the one point to make it ten points to two. Let's have a look at that again because it was uh, almost, uh, it was on the spur of the moment. It seemed to be a flapper at the moment. That, you see what I mean by flapper? Then it gained height and momentum and towards the scoreboard end of this famous Headingley ground, ten points to two. Most of the pundits are tipping Featherstone as the winners today. But at the moment, Casper in front, 10 points to two. Halfway line. Long one. That's a long pass. Burton, who's back in his true form now. And he gets his point beautifully taken by Pickle. A beautiful one under pass. A chase by Fenton. And the chase by Evans. And uh, so, so close. Fenton and Evans chase him. And he was so close. Steve Fenton on uh, the left wing. He got some tries this season, including five tries in the last six matches. Black Pickerel is injured on the ground. The sub would be Gary Stevens if he's on. And Gary, Gary Stevens is being called on. Now, Gary Stevens had just come back from Australia. Had a very good match by Pickerel, but Gary Stevens playing in his first match since a very successful trip in Australia. A bench and gets great applause from the the crowd and uh, there's Pickerel going up to be medically attended to. Well, it's a straight swap, scrum half to scrum half, which is always oh, an important swap. Are it's going to be made? Well, you've got to bring a couple of forwards on something like that. Vince Farrer, captain. Good leader. Offside. I get it far enough back. Fifteen minutes gone in this Yorkshire Cup final. Casford ten, Featherstone two. And there the Featherstone side who, to quote the pundits, have got it all to do. What they've got to do is score two tries and two goals, and then they'll be in front. Big Jeff Townend, known to his pals as Stroller, taking over from Jimmy Thompson, who's got a Bradford. The sub, Peter Smith, 25 yards line. Smith's coming up. Uh, new love. Good football now by Featherstone. Six tackles coming up. So near to the try line. Uh, Keith Bell was a bit flummoxed there. He wasn't quite sure which way he was going to go. He knew it was six tackle and he was probably on his uh, wrong foot. There's 14 coming into shot now. The replace sub, Gary Stevens. And he handles the ball for the first time and tries to go on his own. That shows an experienced, cheeky scrum half. And most scrum halves have got to be a bit cheeky in rugby league. Joiner. Spur. And I give Tony Fisher a new He keeps following up. And really, Lloyd. Lloyd. Looking for Burton. Burton follows Lloyd. And the test judges 
in. Mr. Cookson the bleed with an orange flag. And well, Castleford have had four finals and they've lost. Will it be their first cup win, Yorkshire Cup win? Time alone will tell. Number seven is Bill Butler. Eighteen minutes gone in this uh, second half, with Castleford leading by eight points. Others won't want to lose any more at this moment, but there are a lot of uh, good players in the side that could make the break. But it's uh, quite a decisive lead. Fisher from Swansea, been around the circuit for a while. Now Fletcher, Western. Looking for Burr going on and on. He seems to sidle through, he doesn't. Using Malcolm Reilly, using the strength of Reilly. And the six tackle, three yards out from the Featherston line. The pressure on Featherston, the support is there, but Huddleston stuck when it might have been the better thing to have moved into the three players outside. Featherstone are having problems at the moment. A fresh face of scrum half Stevens, raring to play football. Having seen all the first half on the bench, number 40. <laughs> That's right, you're not big enough to do that. <laughs> Go through the tunnel. <laughs> Well, that's still an enterprising lad. Phil Butler wanted the ball and kicking out the penalty to Featherstone Rovers. John Marsden. Good full back, this boy. A boy to watch for the future. Smith brings it out there's a chance for Featherstone John Gilbert centre best bit of Featherstone work we've had in this last quarter of an hour a try would do them a lot of good at heart there's a well taken by Steve Quinn winger of Ken Kelly the six tackles are coming up very quickly showed how effective the tackling is in the open looking for support Big, Peter Smith, who went to Australia and New Zealand, the World Cup recently had, is a runner like Gibbons. So we're halfway through with Mal 10 points to two to Castleford, and Castleford Malcolm really on the ground. And being attended to by John Malpas, himself not a bad centre in his day. And it's playing to the houses end with the clubhouse to the backs of Featherstone. Scrums 9 7 to Featherstone. The cover of the pool up. Scrums are going to be important now. Physical pressure and mental pressure. The referee said it's all right because I'm assuming Featherstone kicked it out. A little bit of grease on the ground, one or two players slipping around, but of course the usual immaculate com condition. The referee was just having a word with the Featherstone players at that moment. I was trying to imagine what he was saying. Cosford will be happy enough to keep the pace down. Terry Richardson, who uh, set tries. scoring wingers, Catterford, uh, Bernard Cunningham, great one at one time. 
great centre in Brush Atkinson and Croston. That will remind people who do follow from afar, like to be reminded of some of their former stalwarts. Appealing for a knock on, but it isn't. Pull back. Get Rafe. Well, you can tell the pace that this has been going at. With the uh, score at 10 points to two, they're not dashing into the scrums with the same amount of endeavour that they did. 17 minutes to go. Let us need two tries and two goals. And this indicates a man wanting to enjoy his football, going on his own and giving two or three dummies against a big forward who might even doubt him. Burton, Burton running clear. Burton away, chasing Burton is Quinn. A yard short, but they got the try. Brilliantly, they got within a yard of the try line. But a brilliant try by Bruce Burton to make the score 13 points to two. 23 minutes in. And it was a beautiful one, set up in the first, in their own half. And look at him when he looked round to see what support. There was a cover coming from Steve Quinn. They were chasing him, and a yard out. They almost got him, but it was over. And uh, Gilbert and Quinn was left to look at this successful Burton, Bruce Burton, with uh, two tries today in succession and very important ones and a drop goal and Lloyd kicks. 13 points to two. Lloyd should be an easy one for him and it bounces into the middle and 15 points to do. Sammy Lloyd and there's the try score. And really, one would think of this stage is a match winner. We've seen him in all sorts of competitions and they had to spell off. He's a runner. He loves to go, and once he sees the side of the post, it seems to pull him. Wouldn't say he's the fastest man to play rugby league football, but he, he gets the try, gets the points. And with the score, Cuthbert 15, Featherston a 2, 24 minutes gone, and Cuthbert have replaced Tony Fisher uh, with Woodall, and Tufts has come up for that come on for Quinn. So the two subs. This is an enterprising Catholic chasing their first ever Yorkshire Cup. Would all get into touch with the ball and the lively heavy peasant scrum half Gary Stevens who replaced Clyde Pickerel. In at it, dummy half now, using the big belly, Derek Woodall. And uh, you can't have note for that except the scrum back, and Wensey kicked it. Him being Stevens. Well, a remarkable second half. We've had some very good matches this season in rugby league. I think it'll come. We're going to see Castle again on Tuesday in BBC Two Floodlit. Ten past eight next to the Boulevard. Kick off 7.25. That should be another cracker. But of course, this is not over yet. Even at 15.2, it will be a quite remarkable achievement. But there's 14 minutes to go, and I've seen all sorts of things happening in rugby league football with late changes of ascendancy. Gattleford has scored 15 points without a reply. Featherstone scored a try. John Newlove, quietest sort of a game for John Newlove. Oh, there's the burst. Oh, it away, it away, He's looking for support. Good run by Neil Tufts, and on the winger is King Kelly. Well, brilliant play by Featherstone. Good cover by Castleford. Tough, so he's got himself into this match. 
the left winger came in the right flank of Featherstone has not been covered at all but now gone that was the moment Neil Tufts there that might have uh, created the try that Featherstone need for encouragement and Steve fin Fenton on the ground Steve Fenton came in in almost desperate straight to stop the overlap coming in and he did very well to do it but both subs are on Gary Stevens is on and Derek Woodall is on I think Tony Fisher went off simply um, tactics rather than injury Fisher I'm sure was uh, being rested Castleford in this 70th Yorkshire Cup final. Uh, the referee getting a sarcastic cheer for that penalty. But all the players are on one side. And the ball lost. Featherstone Rovers, last year's championship winners. And fourth in the table against Castleford's 12. And a very confident, almost cocky at times, Castleford. A nice little kick, it's a little up and under. And the big uh, Valley Woodall won't go half the length of the field. But the Castleford crowd are uh, loving it, and the team that's driving each other on, talking to each other, saying, Come on, the smelling success. 11 minutes to go. Away goes Weston, galloping with his knees up. He was enjoying that gallop. Really getting his knees up there. Last year, Fladley final, remember Lee, four cast of the 12, and in the John player, cast of the 25, Blackpool, Barrow 15, which we're doing starting soon on the John player competition matches. Now this is the cup final, the SO Yorkshire Cup, with a lot of good rugby. And how you like rugby, you know, the people are varying ways to like it. The hard stuff, the fancy stuff, the frilly stuff. Well, we've had almost a lot today. And Featherstone, Neil Tufts, is not packing in, saying a lot for Featherstone. With the score 15-2, they're not going to pack it in. They're going to go down scrapping. And they have 10 minutes to save this match. And the odds, I don't know. I'm not a betting man. I wouldn't know what the odds would be, but they'd be rather terrific, I would imagine. But they're trying. And a consolation try would give them something to talk about around Featherston tonight. They've done the approach work, not the finishing as yet. Inside and Neil Tufts coming in. Oh, it, 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 lazy sort of a pass, but he jumped it just did well. And a good run. Good run by Steve Evans. Featherstone putting on a lot of good pressure. They need to try to get all their young fans to be able to say, well, it wasn't that a good try. And the approach work has been such there must be something, and here it comes. Peter Smith and the wild youngsters of wild in the nicest possible way. I mean, enjoying that. 15 points to five. And this had been setting itself up for a long time. It was one of many similar moves that, with nine minutes to go, went off his left foot and Peter Smith went in. And the kicker, there's the scorer, Peter Smith. The kicker is Jeff Townend. The score, 15 points to five. Jeff. Jeff, throw a Townend, kicks it, making it 15 points to seven to make it look more respectable in any case, I suppose. But Featherstone kept going. 
32 minutes gone in the Yorkshire Cup final. Well, I've seen all sorts of things happen in 10 minutes and two tries and a goal and a drop goal. Well, Bruce Burton, who is kicking off, has been awarded the player of the match. And his points tally certainly qualifies him to do that. Mick Gibbons, 25 yards line. Can Featherstan produce a sensation? And he scored 15 points to seven. Two quick tries and two quick goals. And they're coming back. And the Featherstan fans are giving them the encouragement that they can to try and save this match. Uh, knock on. But it's a try saving effort. It was Burton, obviously a knock on, but more than that, it was important he made it. As he had he not made it, there was an overlap. Featherson have been in eight Yorkshire Cup finals. This is their ninth. They've lost the last five. Not a good pass. Possibly a little bit more of the tactics now by Cattleford. Shaping the game and pacing the game. Scrums, Featherston 12, Cattleford 10. Gary Stevens on a serve. Had a good tour in Australia with Steve Nuffin-Alton, also from Cattleford, but not fit yet. Western six minutes to go. A big follow. Spur. Bob Spur. Stevens. Ten yards out. Malcolm really with a little shot up and under. And Malcolm I just misses it. Malcolm Reel's the master of the up and under business. He's got it to a fine art. And because he knows even if the defending side takes it, and then it's still advantage to further to the kicking team, in this case Castleford, to have the ball. Five minutes to go. Plus injury time. Terry Richardson. It's 13 players to beat and it's 50 yards to do it in. It's 12 to beat and it's 40 yards to do it in. And off he goes to pushing the ball out. Huddleston. James of that ilk. 25 yards line, really. I'd have given that quote, but then I'm not the referee, thank goodness. Castleford swarming away again. Realist tactics, spreading his team out. Giving the long pass, Burton. And he must be offside. And the referee, Mick Norton, thinks as I do. Or vice versa. Four minutes to go in this exciting cup final. of a break by Phil Butler, new love, and they're battling to the end, the feather, there's an overlap. Come on, say the Featherstone fans, and they're playing good football, John Gilbert. Smashing football for a team who have been behind for most of the time, trying to save something. If only you offer of prestige. The little kick is going to beat him, the ball's... The idea was to beat the two defenders, but he yeah, shouldn't have done that, said that fella. <laughs> he shouldn't have kicked, he said. I, I know he comes from Featherstone. So three minutes left. And Bruce 
Vernon and now Castleford not going to run at this Bobspur Desert. Very good all. Very good. Stevens the other sub. Johnson. Castleford who have turned on some brilliant stuff. Lead in by 15 points to seven. And just as it looked as if the last remnants had vanished, it's Castleford on the attack. Lloyd, good tackle, lost the ball. And I think it fell awkwardly and hurt himself. He's not moved a muscle at the moment. But play goes on. And on comes John Malpath. Away he goes. Two minutes to the end. Two minutes to the end. And Lloyd is getting attention. And uh, that magic sponge will taste sweet and even sweeter if he has a touch of the cup at the end. Lloyd, who has kicked four goals, only one miss. All right. Castle to 15, Featherstone Rovers, seven. Redden. Tucked under John Newell. Gary Stevens, Lloyd, who was standing deep at Huddleston. One minute plus injury time. A little bit of uh, moisture on the top of the ground. Quite foggy here until one-ish. But now he's going to stay put. The flags are drooping, but there'll be more movement with the self-contained flags when the whistle goes for time and we're not far off it good sporting crowd for and ball and they uh, lost it Lloyd fully recovered from his injury he would see him anyway Although you'll find the communal bath very nice. Wraith, fullback. We're into injury time. There it is. 80 minutes gone. By 40 minutes each way. Bob Spur playing it back to Sir Gary Stevens, who runs on his knees. John Joyner. Edelston, giving a dummy and ah, he went over his head, Terry Richardson. What a look for the famous winger Bernard Cuniff, who used to play for Castleford. Number two, Terry Richardson, seven tries this season. Great local rivals. These two teams. Ken Kallet. I don't see any signal being given to the effect that uh, time is, ordinary time is up from the bench. They often do, but uh, a good, ah, uh, new love. Had a bit of a problem there, and he's looking a bit dejected. He gets up slowly, but it pulled back Jeff Wraith. Tackled well and effectively by McGibbons. Can it be a lot of injury time to go? But James Huddleston and Gunther now chasing the kill at the end. 
Brian Welch, Riley, it's going to be a chase. Anything can happen. And the referee is giving a penalty for uh, an offence on Riley. Riley's famed kick. We'll have a look at what happened. Riley in possession, and then his progress was effectually halted. The referee, you can see, in the red jersey or the dark, dark shorts, gave it in the middle of the post, and the kick is would appear to be a, uh, almost a token kick. It's a sixth effort by Lloyd. We've got three minutes of injury time gone. Lloyd will bash it over into the crowd, and that makes it 60, 17 points to seven. Really getting the progressive move to which the goal was kicked by Lloyd. And on comes the fans, but Castleford team, Bruce Burton, man of the match, Looking a very happy Bruce Burden. Cusford's first win in five Yorkshire Cup finals. And a very happy Bruce Burton, I'm sure it is. Malcolm Reilly, who's had a good part in this match, is the captain. So on the main stand of the heading the ground. The uh, trophy will be presented by Mr. So on the main stand of the heading the ground, the uh, trophy will be presented by Mr. Brian Wigmore, regional manager of ESSO, and he presented to that man, Malcolm Reilly. Very happy. Played in Australia successfully, and Australians would be glad to see him having a moment of triumph. And up he goes. He gets the trophy, and uh, Mr. Brown, the chairman of Calvert, very pleased. Sure, same, same moment, and that is the trophy. A magnificent trophy in his 70th year. And the moment is, of course, winners like to have. So just to remind you, the three tries, which Burton got the first and the second, and Peter Smith, but Featherstone, uh, Peter Smith for... Featherstone. So, with a score of uh, 17 points to 7 for Castlebed, hope you've enjoyed it from heading the lead back to Frank in the studio.